Welcome to Your Capital What's Up. I'm Chuck Wigger, your area state senator. Thank you very much for watching. Today we're going to talk about the arts, and I'm very pleased to have with me Michelle Wright from Oakdale. She's an advocate for the arts. It's a group called the Minnesota Citizens for the Arts. Uh, annually at the state capitol, many of my constituents come, as well as other art activists throughout the state, to show their appreciation. Welcome to our show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And for the, the uh, Citizens for the Arts uh, group, tell us a little bit about it, and then we'll get into some of your activities where you work at the Children's Theater, and actually as a mom, too, you're active with uh, various art, uh, art activities. So sure. uh, how about for the overall statewide group? Okay. Well, I got started with it um, uh, many years ago when I, I have a, a background in visual arts. I went to College of Visual Arts in St. Paul, which is defunct now. Yeah. Um, but we, a, lot of, a lot of graduates that have gone on into uh, many uh, fields throughout the Twin Cities. Oh, so. yeah. Um, and the, alum, uh, the alumni of that school were still very active and very connected with each other. Yes. Um, so yeah, it was a very it was a great time, and I, I loved that school, and I was sad to see that it couldn't continue. But we were encouraged to um, participate in advocating for the arts um, then, and that's when I got started. And then um, I've been working at the Children's Theater for the last 15 years, and we're we are always con um, encouraged as staff to attend and to advocate for okay. not just our organization but all artists across the state. So I, I see you do have a fact sheet I and, do. and there was a lot of information that was handed out to the state legislature sure. about the, the tremendous economic impact of the arts as well as the enjoyment but if you'd like to share some quick facts sure. uh, for us and you, you can read off that or whatever I, I'll, like. I'll read this off because I'm not really uh, the definitive expert on all of this but I do know from my own personal experience, you know, I work, I have an arts uh, education, I work in the arts. Arts are really important, not just to me, but to my family mm -hmm. and to my community. Um, so <laughs> that's why it's important to me as a person. But, you know, for Minnesota Citizens for the Arts, um, there's, you know, tens of thousands of artists across the state of Minnesota that have an impact of over a billion dollars um, for Can the state. Can we talk about the types of artists too, it's a sure. fairly broad. I mean, and this is this is um, just I I believe in the fine arts field. So you know, painters, um, theatrical performers, musicians, mm -hmm. um, in all of those art fields. Um, thousands I, of people oh, are involved in this. Thousands uh, of people, um, and I mean, and this isn't even really com including the commercial arts. You know, advertising, um, photography. You know. Uh, commercial photography, graphic design. So, yes. I mean, if you start thinking about those numbers, mm -hmm. the arts employ a lot of people across the state of Minnesota. Yes. Um, so, uh, yeah, and uh, so the jobs supported here, um, like I said, it's tens of thousands, but, you know, if you think of people who are impacted, who aren't artists, but are just um, citizens who appreciate the arts, mm -hmm. I mean, that's you know, or millions of people across the state of Minnesota who love to go to the museums and theaters and um, other places like it, the uh, orchestra, places like that across the, the Minnesota. So, yeah. Um, I, you know, for me personally, <laughs> I, I have four students who are in District 622, and um, I, I've feel like they, we, like I was telling you before, we started here, they all take piano, well, not my three-year-old, but the older three take piano, and I feel like the arts really enrich not just themselves as people, but also their academic success at school, so I feel like there's really... Um, there is a correlation between participating in the arts and uh, academic success. Oh, definitely. My, uh, my son, who's 11 years old, um, he is, really excels at math, and I've I, I have to believe that some of that is just integral to him, but part of that is enhanced by him playing piano for a number of years. Um, yes. There's a relation between the two that I think is really important. So, yeah. Um, yeah, we spoke b before when I met you at the Capitol mm -hmm. about um, our, having, our schools having more financial support yes. to have more arts available for students, and that's something that I feel really strongly about as well. You know, I, wanna, I want us to keep pushing to get more financial support for students. Well, we know of the return on investment, and so hopefully we're going to be able to con continue to increase our efforts, and you're a great example as to 
why it's important. So right. now you also you work at the uh, Children's Theater. I do. Uh, tell us about the Children's Theater well, and uh, <laughs> what you do there. Sure. Uh, I, I work at the Children's Theater. I've been there for about 15 years. It's a very fun place to work and it's a very fun place to bring your kids. Um, we are just um, getting to the end of our current season, which is our 50th anniversary. Um, we opened a piece for preschoolers called Am Animal Dance. Um, which is a delightful um, dance performance piece with actual real live animals on stage. Yes. Um, and uh, Ann Carlson is the performer and it's, uh, <laughs> she, resp they're not trained or, you know, stage animals. They're um, real animals that she is just reacting to in their own environment. So it's, a, it's that's a really fun piece. Um, and then we will be opening in a couple of weeks, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, which I know my, my kids have read all of those books, so we're really excited about that too. Yeah. Um, it's a full musical, uh, yeah, directed by um, uh, a really fun director from Chicago, and uh, it's, it's gonna be a really great piece. And of course there's a website with lots of information sure. about the theater. www.childrenstheater.org. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, and we uh, just announced our next season, um, we start the summer with Pinocchio, which is a really, uh, it's one of my favorite pieces by um, this uh, British writer called Greg Banks, um, and he directs it as well, and mm -hmm. he's wonderful. He's done a lot of pieces for the Children's Theater. Um, he, it's, it is a frame of four um, painters, like construction painters, who are in a space, and they um, are, like, are asked to tell this tale of Pinocchio with just yeah. their painting scaffold and buckets and paintbrushes and they use all of these things as props props to tell the story. Um, so that one is really fun. Um, and then we have um, Elephant and Piggy starts in September um, based on the Mo Willems books. He also wrote um, Don't Let the Pigeon Ride the Bus. That mm. I know my preschooler loves those books. Yes. Um, we, we have a, an original piece called The Last Firefly by Naomi Azuka. Um, sort of based on Japanese folk tales and it's, um, it's a beautifully written piece. Uh, Christmas is a favorite that we're bringing back, Cinderella, mm -hmm. um, told in the classic uh, British panto style where the stepsisters are played by men in, in drag. Um, and it's just so funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that's another one of my favorite pieces. Um, and then uh, we get into the, uh, the spring um, and we are doing a new piece called the Sne Dr. Who, uh, Seuss's The Sneetches. Mm -hmm. um, it's a new f full musical uh, that we're really excited about. And then we end with A Year with Frog and Toad, which is um, a piece we did that was nominated for some Tony Awards in 2003. And we're, we're bringing it back after a number of years of, um, we, we did it then, we had done it a couple years after that, and it's been a while since we brought it back on stage, so. so there, there's a lot happening there. There is and, a lot, and yeah. Now, your job is to help sure, put so it all together? Sure, so, well, <laughs> uh, I run a program called Place for Young Audiences, so um, that program is when we um, develop, commission and develop new pieces like Last Firefly, um, it comes to me and then I make it available to other theaters and schools to uh, produce. So I'm more, um, my, the, the people that I work with are theaters and schools across the country and even internationally. We have a lot of customers in um, Australia and in, in the UK and um, some of our scripts are used um, to teach English as a second language in China, um, in Korea, and other places, so it's mm -hmm. a, that it's that's a it's a very fun job, and I've been that program started in 2004, so I've been running that for the last 10 years. Well, wonderful. Yeah. And in terms of you know, your activities uh, locally, you mentioned your involvement in the schools, and because you know, as a parent, that's very important. Yeah, in yeah it is. Working with them <laughs> and provide lots of joys through the children's theater for thousands of others, but uh, working with uh, you know, the, the children uh, locally is important. And uh, for yourself, uh, what is there a particular art form? You, you mentioned uh, you know, going to, to school sure. and uh, you know, graphics. Yeah, uh, we did. Um, I've gone to uh, school before. Um, you know, I am busy working, so I, I wish I could give more time. Um, 
There's only so many hours. Yeah, there's only so many hours, yes. but I did, uh, last year with my son, we did um, a, a Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead, um, uh, skull decoration um, project that was really fun, you know. Mm -hmm. um, we did that around Halloween, yeah. around the, the holidays, so that was kind of fun. Um, I've also helped with, we did um, for first, when my daughter was in first grade, they did an after school play rehearsal. We did uh, the Jolly Postman, mm -hmm. oh, just a short snippet of it, and that was really fun too. So um, I wish I had more time to contribute to that. Um. <laughs> well, you're doing your fair share, yeah. right, for sure. <laughs> and uh, the decision to live in the Oakdale in our neck of the woods, uh, why did you make that? Yeah, well, I grew up in Woodbury, um, so it's not that far. My my mom still lives there. Um, and then my husband, his parents live in Maplewood. So um, you, we, we're from this area. We like living here. We have grandparents <laughs> who are close to help out with the Great. kids. So, and I, you know, Oakdale, I love our house is, has a pond off the back and there's so many um, protected wetlands and yes. areas for nat you know natural habitat that is just it's it's a I you know and min when I work in Minneapolis and everything is just really you know concrete jungle there and then yeah. to go back home and to be able to just hang out in the back and look at the deer and the eagles you know hunting and stuff it's really nice you know the parks and open space has always been a high priority of the uh, area officials uh, and arts as well so yeah uh, that's great that it's been working for you. Right. Um, you know, I lo and I love that we have the, um, I live right by Walton Park, so that's the park we go to a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And there's that little outdoor amphitheater, and I've always yes. thought that it would be cool if there was um, more um, live theater in the summertime, like mm -hmm. the summer stock type of a thing, so. Um, You've got some connections. Yeah, there. yeah, maybe. <laughs> Maybe I can figure out a way to make that happen. Um, some Shakespeare or something in the park, yeah. I think, would be kind of fun there, because uh, it, it's already sort of set Coming up where, soon. You, yeah, okay. <laughs> where you can perform out there. But I love that Oakdale has, um, in the uh, Nature Center, there's a gallery for yes. visual artists to exhibit. Um, and the whole area, you know, the, the whole, this whole Northeast Metro, you see uh, a lot of support for that, uh, in addition to the whole state. Yeah. Uh, and when, you, when you're when you at the Capitol and sharing different examples, but, uh, you know, we certainly uh, walk the talk locally. Sure, yeah. Uh, um, I mean, it would be, w so my, I have a nine-year-old old daughter who's mm -hmm. a fourth grader at Eagle Point, um, and she's performed a few different places. She She's a Weirdly, I work at a theater, and she's the only one that is interested in acting at this point. Um, but she w had just performed in Stars on Broadway at the Woodbury with Com Woodbury Community Theater Mural mm -hmm. Arts Center, and I was mm -hmm. reflecting on that. Like, it's so great that they have this really nice community performing arts center. Yes. Um, so that's you know something else for us to work towards in Oakdale because it would be nice yeah. to have. Um, you know. All the beautiful, you know, theater in Maplewood and, of course, the Lakeshore. Yeah, so yeah. So well, so much excitement. Yeah, that is true. We have a Ashland Productions in the Maplewood Community Center. Yes. That's a beautiful, s yeah, and she actually has performed there, too, and that's a beautiful space. So, yeah, definitely. Um, Wonderful. Yeah. Well, we appreciate your work for the arts uh, as, as a mother, as an employee at the Children's uh, Museum and as a statewide advocate for the arts, uh, you work together and you can accomplish more doing that. Right. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to share with our viewers uh, about the arts? Um, well, you know, I just want to reiterate that the uh, the arts um, are it, an important part of our state's economy. There's a lot of artists that live and work in Minnesota, me being one of them, <laughs> um, and that it is something that is. Um, not only um, a viable career, um, but that is something that's integral to other career paths as well. You know, having a, the ability to be creative um, lends itself to engineering or in the medical field, you know, all different areas. So I, I just I feel like um, that I'm so proud that we have the legacy amendment that continues support of the arts. Um, yes, and thanks for mentioning that. Yeah. The, the voters approved it, Dan. It has uh, made so many uh, great projects uh, available for us to appreciate and enjoy. Right, um, and it's you know something that we just committed to as Minnesotans that the arts are important to us. 
our, um, our state parks and our wildlife is important to us and that we're gonna put some money aside for that, for those things. So I'm, I'm very proud of that. Um, and I do actually, because I work with other theaters and, and schools yep. and stuff across the United States, it's really not that way for a lot of other states. Nice. <laughs> so yeah, I'm very, I'm proud to say that I live here. Well. Michelle Wright of Oakdale, thank you for your activism, yeah. for the Minnesota Citizens for the Art, for your work at the Children's Theater and walking the talk locally in the community on projects with uh, you know, the kids. Uh, we deeply appreciate that. Continued success to you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And viewers, if you have questions about the Minnesota Citizens for the Arts, they have a great website. Uh, check that out as well as the Children's Museum. If you have questions of me, give me a call. My cell phone is 651-770-0283 or at the Capitol, 296-6820. With Michelle Wright, I'm Chuck Wieger. Thank you very much for watching. Okay, we'll be on camera a little bit here. Okay. And so hopefully we covered most of the points. Yeah, I think and so, yeah. Good. Um, good. Yeah, and I think, well, we can put their website, but I think the website um, yeah, and Is we'll maybe see, I, I don't know if you can share that with them in there. They might be able to put something uh, on, that on there. Okay, so. yeah, all right. Great. Great. Okay, well, thank you. And then thank uh, you. unclip there. And oh, then yeah. I'm going to go to Judge Bastion. He's my next. Okay. Person.